So you bought a Tundra and quite understandably, you wanna make some modifications to it. After you've got some maintenance done and you've kind of figured out what direction you wanna go with the truck, there's plenty of different mods that are available. So number one is a lift and tires. There's a couple different reasons for lifting, whether you're looking for off-road performance or looks. In general, the smaller the lift, the more reliable and durable the setup, especially on the front end. You can only lift it so much before you really start to destroy some components. The first kind of lift is a level where you just lift it so that the front and back are level. Generally, all you do is lift the front so you put a spacer or some cheap coilovers on there, or you can lift both the front and rear. You can end up with the truck level or still a little raked doing this. Nicer and taller springs in both the front and the rear. You can do this for about as cheap or as expensive as you want. It can be a couple hundred bucks if you just put blocks and spacers on, um, or it could be several thousand dollars if you're looking at fully adjustable coilovers, really nice leaf springs, um, or even long travel. Unless you're going with a bracket lift or a body lift, you're not really creating tire clearance unless you also mess with the bump stops. Um, but most people seem to run 32 to 35 inch tires depending on the lift and depending on how much trimming they're willing to do. Tires that are taller than about 32 inches or even 32 inches are gonna need spacers or aftermarket wheels so that the tires don't rub on the upper control arm. This is true for almost every tire size, although the skinnier the tire, the less likely it is to rub on the control arm. Alignment and upper control arms, all of that's gonna affect it slightly. If you lift greater than two inches, you're probably gonna need an upper control arm. If you wanna learn a lot about lift kits, uh, go ahead and watch the video that I have here, and this will tell you everything you need to know about lifting a first gen Tundra. At this point, if you're finding this content helpful, please hit the like button so that I know this video is useful to you. Thank you so much. Headlights. I see headlights modified often, but a lot of the times people get it wrong. The Tundra lighting system is definitely outdated. It's old. The stock lights don't throw out that good of lighting output and they definitely need updating and upgrading. So a projector retrofit is gonna solve that need for you. It's gonna throw a lot better light and it's gonna be a massive upgrade over the halogen system. So the wrong way to do this is just swapping in a traditional Chinese Amazon LED bulb into reflector housing. This is gonna cause a lot of scattering and poor overall throw of light. While it might seem really bright, you're not gonna have a clean cutoff line and it's not going to actually be an improvement in performance. You're gonna be blinding other drivers. You might be able to see slightly better, but overall it's a much worse way to go. The traditional halogens are a better throw of light even if they feel a little weaker. The correct way to do it is to get some kind of projector in that. Whether you go with a mini projector bulb, I've been seeing a lot of people uh, do these. Another YouTube channel which I really like, JDM Driveway, has a video on replacing his with the mini projectors. I see this a lot in Facebook groups. These look like a good way to go with actual projectors. So I see these most commonly either through BX Built or TEQ Customs. So you can get a DIY kit where they ship you all the components but you put the headlight together yourself or you can have them build and ship you a fully plug and play enclosed uh, headlight housing. The projectors will throw a more concentrated light, they'll throw it a further distance, and they'll do it all without blinding oncoming traffic, provided you aim them correctly. They'll also provide you an opportunity to customize the front end look of your truck. You can make it go really crazy with RGB, halo setups, different switchbacks, or you can keep it pretty close to stock aesthetics if you go with a chrome housing and a low key projector. If you go with a projector, the truck is much safer for everyone, including oncoming traffic while you're driving at night. And that's the goal. You wanna be able to see better, but you wanna be able to do it without blinding other drivers and making the road conditions more hazardous for them. I would definitely recommend updating your interior and your sound system. So get a head unit aftermarket so you can plug in your phone, charge it. Uh, you can get something with CarPlay or a touchscreen something that will do navigation for you. The stock stereo is pretty limited and the sound from the truck overall isn't great. So even on my truck, I've added an aftermarket stereo. I have aftermarket door speakers. I have videos about how to install these if you're looking to see what that takes to do it yourself. But I definitely recommend upgrading it. You can go with cheaper little double den units like what I have. I think that's pretty low key and I like how it's set up. But a lot of people go for a CarPlay setup which is really slick um, and makes streaming from your phone pretty seamless. Definitely upgrade the door speakers. They're really easy, you can do it for quite cheap, and you can definitely do it yourself. It's not hard at all. You can soundproof the interior to diminish road noise, um, especially if you have some kind of exhaust system or noisy tires. This is gonna make highway trips and uh, long distances much more enjoyable. It's an older truck, so it is gonna have probably more road noise than you're used to if you're coming from a modern vehicle or a passenger car. I also added a small phone holder. There's not much, especially if you have an 
access cab that doesn't have the center console, it just has the bench row, there's really not a great place to put your phone. So a small phone holder makes my setup more comfortable for road trips. So I can keep the phone out of the way, just right above the stereo. I can charge it there and, and nothing's in the way if I need to eat while I'm on the road or put something in the cup holder. So an exhaust system, this is super popular on the Tundras but I think it's easy to screw up. Unless you're going with some kind of like dyno tested proven exhaust, you're probably messing with the power band of the truck and there's a chance you're actually reducing or hurting the capabilities of the truck. This is controversial, but oftentimes I feel like the stock exhaust system is pretty darn good for what it is. Toyota engineered it that way and messing with it just randomly and speculatively may be damaging the performance of your truck. Dirty Deeds though seems to have a really nice race exhaust system. They have really nice 12 hole injectors. If you compare that with some long tube headers or some shorties and get a setup that's proven, you're probably going to improve the overall horsepower of your truck and get it sounding the way you want. One of the biggest and best mods, listen, you bought a Tundra probably because you needed a truck bed. So if you have a truck, I definitely think the bed should be set up for how you generally are gonna use the truck. There's lots of ways to customize it. You can get camper shells for storing equipment and locking it up. You can get a soft topper if you're into that. There's tonneau covers available, bed racks, sliding campers, toolboxes. There's even flatbed conversions that you can get for these um, if you're willing to order from Australia. And of course, if you're some kind of contractor or you need a camping setup, custom built drawers and shelves. Decked does not make a system for the first gen Tundra. So that's a little bit of a hindrance if you're coming from a different full size truck that they support or even a Tacoma, a mid sized truck. Decked does not have a system for the first gen Tundra. You can get a box from certain model F250s to fit. There's an F250 bed that's similar enough dimensions that you can trim down a decked system to fit it in your first gen Tundra. But yeah, definitely if you're in a camping, either a camper shell or a bed rack of some sort is gonna be a great mod to set it up. Otherwise, toolbox, contractor cap. Modifying the bed on these trucks is I think what makes them truly great and truly better than an SUV, that you can have this six and a half foot or an eight foot bed if you get the regular cab. You have this nice bed to fit all your stuff in. It doesn't have to be in the cab. It's not gonna rattle around in there. It's not gonna get your cab dirty. Definitely modifying the bed is in my opinion where this truck really shines. Me personally, I have a nice fiberglass shell with contractor windows that flip out on either side. And I've got a nice sleeping setup with one basically um, drawer where I fit all my tools and I can sleep right next to it. I can sit up in the bed. Um, and it's a very comfy, cozy sleeping setup. I can fully extend because I'm slightly shorter than the bed by a couple of inches. It's a great setup. That's where these trucks really shine in that, you know, they're V8, they've got enough room in the cab and they've got enough room in the bed for whatever you're trying to do. They truly shine in this sense as a great camping truck or a great work truck. Now, if you're looking for some aesthetic mods, one of the most popular things that's recently come out for these is the TRD grill, which is basically a knockoff of the late model TRD grills that you'll see on Tacomas and 4Runners. So Taco Vinyl makes these, TEQ Custom makes these, and you can also get it through Alibaba. It's all basically the same design. I have the Taco Vinyl grill, and then you can add Raptor lights to these if you're into that. Other small notifications that I like include some of the armor available for the first gen Tundra. So for example, on mine, I have this coastal off-road bumper. This is great as an all around addition to the rig. And the reasons I have it is it provides nice, easy to access recovery points right on the front of the truck that I can add a D-ring to future, it's gonna allow me to add a winch and it's a great protection for deer. Um, I spent a lot of time driving on the highway. I spent a lot of time driving in deer country and it is unnerving late at night to see a deer right on the side of the road, right next to your truck and be hoping that it, it doesn't jump out in front of you even as you're slowing down. So this, this is a mod that may not be for everybody but has worked great for me. I, I love the way the truck looks with this bumper on and I'm really excited to use it this summer in recoveries. It'll definitely improve my confidence. It'll have a better approach angle and it totally protects the truck. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any mods of your own that you'd like to add to this, please comment them below, but otherwise be sure to like the video and stay tuned for more. Thank you so much.